My name is uh, Diagon David. I serve in uh, Medhani Adam, Dallas, Texas. And today we're going to learn about Mukrab. Uh, we know that like uh, it's the uh, third week of uh, Great Lent. And our church scholar, St. Yared, named it Mukrab. And in our church, we, the priest read that the gospel of uh, John uh, chapter two, verse uh, 13 up to 22. And then there that we learned that our Lord Jesus Christ uh, were cleaning the temple. So before we learn about Mukrab, I wanna, I wanna give you a, a brief, about like how Mukha comes before we go too deeply into Mukha. Uh, I'll try to explain how Mukha started. So as we all know, uh, before God start creating the creatures, he was, he was praised by his divine nature. Basically in our church, there is a, on Sa'atat, so the morning prayers, it said, Sibhat yuhu, zem hab yuhu, yuhu, So basically his glory comes from him to him and his praise goes to him. So before any creatures exist, God was praised by himself. He was glorified by himself. However, after, uh, on the first day, our Lord created angels. So angels were created to serve God, to glorify God. As we can read on Isaiah 6, uh, up to like from uh, chapter 6 up to verse 3, that the angels were praising God before his thrones. They said, holy, holy, holy in the Lord's of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So also we can find this verse on the revelation of uh, chapter four, verse eight. So basically those angels were praising God. So those angels stand and worship our Lord before his thrones in fear. So on Isaiah, on this chapter, if you see on Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2, there <clears throat> the angels were covering their, uh, their faces, they were covering their feet, and then also they were flew from place to place. So uh, St. Yared translated this saying that they cover his, their faces and they cover their feet because our Lord is fire. So they fear the fire comes, can consume them. So they cover their faces, they cover their feet. And then after that, our Lord created, our God created Adam and Eve. So after the fall of mankind, uh, from, from Adam to Moses, they were worshiping and making uh, altar sacrifice uh, the animals or fruits of the ground to God. 
that's how they making sacrifices. So they were making altars and then there they sacrificed the animals. Example, we can see that like, uh, for, for instance, we can see uh, Cain and Abel. So those two brothers, one of them, uh, Cain was a tiller of the ground. He was a farmer. So one time Lord asked them to offer um, to make a sacrifice to him. So Cain was a farmer. So he got, he brought a sacrifice to the Lord from the fr fruit of, uh, fruit of the ground. And then also Abel was a shepherd, as we all know. So she, uh, Abel brought a, a sacrifice from the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. However, Cain brought, uh, were making his sacrifice with evil, like he didn't do on the, with his uh, pure heart. So since God doesn't eat, he doesn't care if, we brought, if I brought him uh, the good one or the bad one. So I'm just gonna give him whatever the uh, the fruit of the ground. However, it was the opposite. He brought a sacrifice from his firstborn, the best one, with his pure heart. And then God accepted Abel, Abel's sacrifice. However, uh, he denied Cain's sacrifice because he didn't uh, he didn't sacrifice as he's supposed to do with a pure heart. So, and then also uh, we can find this uh, story on Genesis four two to five. And then also we can see that like uh, other fathers were uh, making altars to sacrifice uh, and worshiping God. One of them is Noah. After the flood, we can see that Noah uh, was built an altar to God and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered Paul burns offering, offerings on the altar. So after the flood, Noah uh, brought a sacrifice from the clean animals, from the clean uh, birds. So God promised Noah he will not flood the world again. And then after that, like after a time, when it, uh, after a time, God gave uh, a new command, uh, commandments and a covenant to St. Moses on the Mount of Sinai. So there he explained, our Lord explained to uh, Moses that he should make a sanctuary so that he may dwell among them. So he showed Moses how he should uh, mate or how he should prepare a sanctuary. So uh, they, uh, Moses made uh, a turn, uh, tabernacle for the Ark of uh, Covenants. So there, uh, the Lord was exist. He there, like he there, uh, when the priestess, offered the, when the priestess brought the sacrifice, he accept there. And then after that, like after a time, uh, King David saw that like the Ark Covenant was on the tent. So one time he think the, the Ark Covenant is on the tent, but I live on this beautiful castle. So I should make a house of God. I should make, I should build a temple. And then after that, 
he planned to make uh, to build a temple. However, the Lord didn't didn't accept this because he told uh, King David that he could he's not gonna build his temple because he King David was a war man and then he being shedded a lot of blood so God told him that he's not gonna uh, that King David would not build the house of the Lord however his son King Solomon will build his uh, his uh the temple so king david uh prepare everything that needs for the temple after a time uh after king david died king solomon start built uh, building the temple and then after he finished it he make it sacrifice there for the lord and then he prayed after he finished the temple he prayed there he said my God, I pray, let your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. So basically, King Solomon prayed for, for, to God that his ears, his eyes should be attentive at the house of the Lord, at the temple. So God appeared and then told King Solomon that he would, uh, uh, he would be attentive to the prayer that prayed on that temple. So after that, the Israelites made a uh, fall down uh, from God, from his command, uh, commandments. So, God gave them to uh, uh, um, to unbelievers king. So those people, they went to Babylon. They went, they fled to Babylon. So there, the Babylon people destroyed the temple. And then they took everything that was in the temple. And then they took the people there too. So after a time, when the people, they, they've been there like for 70 years. So there, they, they returned to God and then they were crying to God to help them. So there, they start praying like they were doing like a small assembly and then they were and they start praying to god so basically mokrab means so uh mokrab means the word mokrab means it, uh, it drives from the word korebe from this it means the house of prayer or synagogue so that's when they start uh that's how we start mukra or the house of prayer or the synagogue that's how they started so after the that's when the israel's uh after the israel's return to jerusalem they start to build the house of the lord the temple again and then However, there were like many prayers, uh, there were like many mukrab around the Jerusalem. So for today, we know that our Lord Jesus Christ went to the temple and then there he cleaned the house of the, of the Lord. There, as, as we can read from the Gospel of John 2, verse 13. There was a Passover of the Jews at the hand, and Jesus went to uh, went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and 
the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip, of course, he drove them out all out of the temple with the ships and the oxen and peered out the changers money and overturn, uh, overturn the temples. So basically, as we all know, our Lord Jesus Christ was a peaceful man. He was a composite man. However, during the Passover of the Jews, he was very angry. He was very mad. He was so furious. So he made a whip and uh, of course, and then drove them out of the temple. It's because like this, why our Lord Jesus Christ was mad? Why he was angry at them? Because he, if we see like the Bible on the Old Testament, he ordered them to make sacrifice from uh, sheep, oxen, uh, doves, etc. However, during that time, our Lord Jesus Christ was mad. He was angry with the, uh, the people who sold there and then drove them, drove them out. It's because those people, the authority of the temple, what they did was like there was a, this place where the Gentiles came, the, the Gentiles, the non-believers came to worship to the temple. So as we all know, it's Passover. So when it's Passover, like many peoples from all over the world comes to Jerusalem and then makes a sacrifice there. However, the authorities, what they did is like, they saw the, the there was uh, a Gentile's place. There was a Gentile's course where they, uh, Gentiles worship and sacrifice, and then that's where they offer. However, during that time, what they did is uh, the authorities brought the merchandise to that court. So basically, the Gentiles didn't have any place to worship or to make any uh, to make a sacrifice. So he was so furious because this is a temple of the house of the Lord, not a dance of thieves. This is the place where people get together and worship and pray to God. Not a place where you sold oxen, doves, or those kind of animals. So they turn that place into a dance of thieves. So that's why our Lord Jesus Christ was so furious, so angry with them. And then he made a whip and then cleaned the house of the Lord. As uh, King David on his uh, book, Zalm, that written, Zion for your house had eaten me up. So basically the Zion, that place should be the prayer of the house of the prayer, not the uh, not the place of uh, merchandise or solding things. So for that reason, our Lord Jesus Christ was angry. So let's go back to us and then how we should stand in the house of the Lord. Basically, today, Mukra, what we learn in Mukra is how we should stand in the house of prayer. We know that our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, for today's uh, Mesmer from uh, in uh, our church, uh, St. Yari said, Ba'a Yosus Mukra Ba'ayhut wa Mahare Kalahaymanat. So there, our Lord Jesus Christ went to the into the temple of the Jews and told the word of faith. So basically, we know that the temple is where we learn about our phases. 
where we learned the word of God. So that's where we learn our faiths. But how should we stand there? How should we be in the house of the Lord? That's our main question for today. So basically, uh, on Mukrab, uh, we learned this stuff. So on Kadasi, uh, on Kadasi, Exi, the anaphor of our Lord, uh, say that in Kadasi, say that the deacon said, Your heart shall be. On heaven, say that. So the people confirm that yes, our hearts are in heaven. For Thai names say strengthens us and make us worthy. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. So basically, when we go to church, our heart should be in heaven. As we see previously. Uh, the angels stand before the thrones of God with tears. And as believers too, we should stand. Like we should learn from the angels that we should stand in fear. When we go to church, we should be like in fear. Because our, uh, like our God is fire. So we should stand. Uh, in fear, that's the first thing we have to do. Like when we go to church, uh, we have to uh, like we have to be in fear. And then also the thing is, when we go to church, we have to remember that like why we should go to church. Basically, some of us we go to church because our parents say so, because they force us to go to church. And, and then some of us, we go to church because uh, we're going to meet our friends there. So we're going to hang out with them while there is Kadasi. So that's not the main thing we should go to church. When we go to church, we should, uh, we should, we should, uh, we should desire to see our Lord's uh, we should desire to see the face of our Lord. If we see like King David's on Psalm 122, when they say, let's go to uh, the Lord's house, I, I, be, I became very happy. I became very excited because when we go to church, we should like, we should see the Lord. We should see him like, in front of us because Lord is love. So we should love him. And then, so when we go to church, we should not go to meet our friends or because our parents say so. And then also the deacon say, when we go to church, also we have to be We should not be in cruel with our neighbors, our friends. We should forgive him or we should forgive her before we attend to church on Sundays. So, and then also, if we have any doubts in our heart, we should believe when we go to church, we should believe. And then the deacon say, if there is any blemish in the heart of anyone, let him not approach. So if we have any blemish, if we have any sin, before we attend, before we approach to church, we should repent. Because our Lord is pure. Our Lord is clean. So we should be clean as him too because we are his sons. The saints, if, uh, if you remember last week was uh, this, right? It was called this. So 
uh, Saint Peter on his epistle, on the first uh, uh, first epistle, chapter one, it says like, as God is pure, as God is kudus, be uh, pure in all your things. So our Lord is pure. So we stand in front of him with purity. If we have any blemish, we should repent before we enter to the house of the Lord. And then also, if we fall in the sin, we have to remember that we should not forget because it's not forgotten. So we have to repent before we go to the house of the Lord. And then also, when we go to church, we should go to we should we should go there to pray to, to him, as King uh, Solomon said on the Second Chronicles, uh, chapter six, verse forty. So, whenever we pray on the house of the Lord. We have to remember that the ears, the eyes of our God is there. So every time we have to go to church, there is a, our uh, squad teachers once say that it's better to go to church one time than uh, to pray than like 30, uh, 10 times in your house. Because it's the house of the Lord. That's where his eyes, his ears are. So we should go to the house of the Lord with fears. And then we have to remember that there is, uh, there our Lord is there. His ears and his eyes. And then he's going to listen to our prayers. So that's the thing we should know. And then also at the end, when we go to church, we have to remember that we go there to meet God, not the people, not because our parents say so, but our Lord says so. We have to be there. We have to be attentive to his words. That's where we learn uh, his words. So. When we go to there, we have to examine ourselves and then we have to clean ourselves. So we should not mention our neighbors since, or we should not maintain any uh, hate, hatred against our neighbors because our Lord can see us. Our Lord can examine our hearts even though if we try like to hide, let's say if we uh, fighting with my brother and then, and then if I go to church and then make their uh, a sacrifice, our Lord would not accept the sacrifice because uh, I'm not like, uh, because I have to make, I have to forgive my, uh, uh, my brother's sin. I have to ask him to forgive uh, my sin too. So after that, like uh, the Lord can accept my offer. So we have to know that like when we go to church, we have to be careful. Okay. So uh, for today, that was it. Hopefully uh, it was, it was clear. Hopefully you learned something from today's uh, lesson. Uh, glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the intercession of Our Lady be with you all and the saints, amen.